earlier this week, I went on a search of the nave. I was on a mission to find an image of the Good Shepherd. In this nave, I studied every stained glass window very, very carefully. I walked around, and they're all over the place. And I studied every banner, but I could not find it. Spiritual truth, like breath itself, is always moving, always transforming. And so I took a minute to pause and to think and to allow the Good Shepherd to lead me. And then I thought, I know exactly what to do. So I walked down the long hallway. I walked up the stairs. I walked down another long hallway into the children's chapel. And I looked on all the walls. And there it was. The Good Shepherd. I should have known that the Good Shepherd would be where the littlest lambs could see him. The Good Shepherd loves every lamb, loves every lamb from before they were born. The familiar 19th century American nursery rhyme tells us about how lambs become bonded to their shepherds, even if that shepherd is a little schoolgirl. You all know this one. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Well, how does such bonding happen? We need a shepherding 101 lesson. A shepherd doesn't drive sheep. A shepherd leads sheep. Instead of pushing and shoving them from behind, a shepherd calls them to follow him. The sheep follow because they know the voice of the shepherd and they trust that voice and that voice is a sign of protection. Like many, you may feel bonded to the 23rd Psalm, which we chanted today. It's a lesson in shepherding too. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside still waters until I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No soul wants to be driven or pushed or prodded from behind. The soul wants to be led, wants to be called forth to good places like still waters and green pastures. If you find yourself in such a place, it's likely that you are already recognizing the sound of the Good Shepherd's voice. Shepherds sometimes at night would combine flocks for purposes of security and safety and, and for company, for that matter. In the morning, the shepherds would call out to their sheep, and their sheep would follow the shepherd whose voice they already knew, and they would go their separate ways. There is more accurate information in the sound of someone's voice than in the words that they say. If you listen carefully to the voice, you will hear fear, anger, impatience, hostility, or you will hear tenderness, compassion, affection and love. Our souls tune in early to this sensitivity. For nine months before you were born, you could hear your mother's heartbeat, her breath and her voice. A baby in the darkness of the womb hears the mighty rushing wind as mom breathes in and out. Now think of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is first heard in a mighty rushing wind, and only afterward is it seen as tongues of flame. This is similar to the Spirit of God moving like breath over the primal waters, bringing forth creation. Then God speaks, let there be light, and the light is seen. Studies show that newborns immediately respond to voices they learn before birth. 
the same voice outside the womb speaks their name and begins to teach the baby awareness of both its mother's presence and their own presence on this earth and what that means. You first heard that you were here. Now hear with your ear that you hear that you're here. Your hearness and your hearing are intimately entwined. Your personal presence is first heard, then seen. So, says St. Paul, faith comes by hearing. And so bonds are formed by hearing. Many in our modern culture suffer, suffer from a hearing loss. I mean a loss of positive spiritual awareness of being here at all. Many no longer believe in their creator. They do not believe that there is a loving, intelligent God who would be aware of the human presence of each of us and know each of us by name. Many people feel unknown, they feel unheard, and they feel unimportant. This is especially true with many teenagers who feel unbonded with and unbondable. We must affirm the hereness of one another. We must affirm the hereness of each child's precious soul. We need to affirm that each child has a place in this world, and to do that before some bully tells a young person that they are a nobody, a piece of trash, or a nothing. If you have heard such words, these are not the words of the Good Shepherd. It is not his voice. Bullies and wolves are a nasty pack. Unfortunately, our world is full of wolves with very weak egos, wolves who seek to destroy vulnerable lambs in order to make themselves feel known, heard, and important. Now, ponder the deep mystery and terrible challenge of Jesus' teaching. Jesus says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep into the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. For the record, this teaching does not sound like good shepherd best practices to me. <laughs> we must remember the shepherd leads the sheep where the shepherd is willing to go first. Where the good shepherd goes first to lay down his life so that he can take it up again. The Lord of life lays down his life so that those who follow are taken up into his eternal life with his Father. Every one of us is in need of our Good Shepherd. The, habit, the habitat of the wolf is large and takes on a variety of forms. There are religious wolves, there are sexual wolves, financial wolves, political wolves. There are wolves that phone us that post on our websites, that tweet us, and that deliver nasty flyers on our doorsteps. All seek to snatch sheep away from the direction of still waters and green pastures. When you feel the wolf's teeth start to close around the back of your neck, go back to the nursery rhyme where you will find the inseparable bond between the good shepherd and the sheep. That inseparable bond is named Mary. Mary, the God-bearer, had a little lamb. Jesus' fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, along with all humanity, the lamb was sure to go, even to the grave and gate of death. I know it doesn't rhyme. I realize that. <laughs> the incarnate mystery of the Son of God doesn't even make sense, except in this. 
that the good shepherd knows what it is like to be a lamb. The good shepherd enters into the wolf's yawning jaws and lays down his life there so that all lambs may be taken up into his arms, the arms of the only one that can touch those teeth and live. Trust where the Good Shepherd leads, whether the waters are stormy or still. He knows the way to lead the sheep right up to the house of the Lord forever. Perhaps you are in search of this house for yourself, on a mission to find the Good Shepherd at the Church of the Holy Spirit. You study the stained glass windows and banners. You find hints and suggestions, but you want to find the man himself. Search no more. You have arrived. Right here. Where all the lambs have heard his voice and have been led together. This is the place where lambs are nourished and led forth by the good shepherd's call to various ministries in the church, to packing the food pantry, to serving at the, on the altar guild, to singing in the choir, to even serving on a committee. This is the place where the Holy Spirit is always transforming little lambs into good shepherds. The good shepherd knows us and calls us each forward into his love and service. The address of his house is quite simple. It is at the intersection of goodness and mercy. Easy to find. Look where the lambs can see him. Look in the direction where the lambs are following him. Amen.